OpenAI has just launched a new model, GPT-5 Codex. This is a brand new model that is highly optimized for agentic coding. Now, OpenAI has got a bunch of products with the name of Codex. There is a CLI, there is an extension, there is a cloud-based code editor. And now, this is a new model that comes GPT-5 Dash Codex. GPT-5 Codex is a model that is highly optimized. It's a version of GPT-5, but this model is highly optimized for software engineering tasks or to be specific agentic coding. So if you want to code with AI or if you want to use something like Claude code, but you don't want to be in the Claude Anthropic ecosystem, then GPT-5 Codex is the right model for you. OpenAI claims that this is one of the fastest model and much more smarter than GPT-5 for programming related tasks. Codex is available as part of ChatGPT Plus, Pro and a bunch of other places and everywhere you use Codex, for example, within your GitHub, within the web or even within the terminal and IDE, you can use GPT-5 Codex. Now, in terms of benchmarks, GPT-5 Codex for Sweep Bench Verified does not look like a huge task. GP Sweep Bench Verified is a benchmark where you have got a bunch of GitHub issues and the agent has to solve the GitHub issues. So GPT-5 High has solved 73% while GPT-5 Codex High has solved 74.5%. So even if you round it off, it is just like extra two GitHub issues per 100 issues. So it's not a major difference to be honest. But code refactoring task, GPT-5 High has only an accuracy of 34% while GPT-5 Codex has got an accuracy of 52%. Anybody who has used Codex or Claude Code, you would know that this is one of the biggest tasks people use these AI agents, not necessarily to write the raw code in itself, but more around refactoring the code so that your code looks much better. It, um, it follows design patterns and it, it, you know, it has got standards and all those things. So having more than 51% accuracy in code refactoring task is such, such an important thing. And another interesting thing here is that last time when OpenAI reported SWE Bench Verified, there was a complaint about OpenAI that it was manipulating. So they have addressed this here. Historically, including at the time of GPT-5 launch, we reported results on 477 SWE Bench Verified tasks because some tasks couldn't run in our infrastructure. We have since fixed it and now report on all 500 tasks. So this was a complaint last time. A lot of people said OpenAI is manipulating the benchmark because they don't want to, they wouldn't beat otherwise a cloud code. So they're trying to, you know, just manipulate by not doing the task on 500 tasks, but only on 477. OpenAI claims that now they have fixed. So now here they have shared the value. So it overall works with 500 GitHub issues and 75%, 74.5% of all the tasks of all the GitHub issues have been resolved. A very interesting benchmark or very interesting metric that I like to see here is how companies dog food their tool. See, you can't change the world saying that you're going to replace all the coders if your own coders are not using the tool that you're building. I think this is a very, very critical factor. And I appreciate the fact that OpenAI has been open about their own employees using Codex. So they have released the traffic. So on OpenAI employee traffic, we see that the bottom 10% of users sorted by model generated tokens, including hidden reasoning and final output. GPT-5 Codex uses 93% fewer tokens than GPT-5. So you can see here 93% fewer than GPT-5. So that means your cost is going to be less. You're going to hit less rate limits. Conversely, for the top 10%, GPT-5 Codex thinks more spending twice as long reasoning, editing and testing code and iterating. So if you're a power user, Codex is going to do much better for you. If you're not a power user, if you're like just using it to update readme and that sort of thing, then Codex is going to be highly optimized and then it's going to save cost for you. Another interesting aspect is that Codex has been specifically trained for code reviews and finding critical flaws. And you can see there are some of the benchmarks they have got where they're saying incorrect comments. Codex has got lesser incorrect comments, Codex has got high impact comments and Codex has got less comments per PR on an average. So rather than just like blabbering everything, rather than just throwing out some random text, this model is highly optimized for code review. Products like Code Rabbit are going to get a hit because of this particular tool because you can literally go to GitHub and then say Codex, review this PR and then it is going to go through the code and then review the PR. I want to show it to you like very briefly, but you can see that all the updates that OpenAI has done as meaningful update 
something that people have been asking for. In fact, they've got a bunch of other updates like the resuming task and other things. So all these things will be applicable within CLI, within the extension and uh, the cloud environment where you can go access it. But I wanted to give you a quick snapshot of how I just used it. And uh, I used it with a project that is like nine years old. I wrote like nine years back, it's almost a decade. A very, very, very bad Python code, a Selenium based code to extract Google Play Store reviews. At that time, I was doing a lot of NLP things. I don't think people were calling it NLP at that point, but I was doing a lot of NLP thing. So I had this code and uh, I just literally went ahead and then said, the code is too old at this point, nine years old, and we have complaints that it's not working. Um, can you fix it and upgrade it, make sure it works like a CLI? That's all the thing that I said. And you can see that for this particular task, it successfully managed to write 351 new lines of code, removed 71 older code and tested the code. You can see it managed to test the code, whether it works perfectly like this in the kind of a CLI format. It gave me a summary of what it did and it worked for five minutes and did all those things. Help me raise a PR. I ultimately fix the PR, uh, merge the PR and then done. Next, I asked for another few things. I said, okay, now my code doesn't have test. So at this point, you can see it worked for 10 minutes. When I asked it to modify the code, it worked only for five minutes. But when I asked it to give me the uh, test, spy test, then it has worked for 10 minutes. Now I can go click create PR. It's going to create PR for me. And there are a bunch of other things that I asked it to do. Like, for example, I asked it to add uh, the badge that will indicate whether the PR, uh, whether the tests are running properly. I also asked it to uh, tell me, you know, uh, if uh, we can have a GitHub automation. So this is there. No conflict with the base branch. You can see Codex has reacted with the emoji icon here. So I can just click PR uh, merge request or I can just go here and then say Codex uh, if I've got the Codex bot and I can ask it to review. So I want to just merge the PR. And we're just going to use the same thing. So you can see it has added the summary. What is the summary? Add a pi test based test suite for CLI validation, review normalization and writers. And they're also doing mocking. Anybody who has written tests for API, you know that mocking is a way you try to mimic an API and then try to test what is it going. It's merged. Now what I'm going to do is I've already got one more peer that is open, which is for GitHub actions. I'm going to go here and then see it says some tests are not available. I'm going to just, just merge for, for now let's merge it. And you can see it says we can just simply say codex fix the comments and it will do it. And the final PR that I asked it to do is couple of lines of code. It is adding a GitHub actions button, uh, no conflicts with the base, merge it and then go back and then see what is going to happen. So if you go to actions, it's already kicked off the action. So previously it did not work because obviously we didn't have uh, the test file intact and it says tests are passing. So all these things in the, you can see it was edited nine years before and everything else was like in the last 30 minutes when I was testing this model and it has done a tremendous job. Like to my surprise, it has done much better job. Like it knew that there is a new dependency that I can use to make the code simple. It knows that what kind of things that I can, or users would ask. So it made sure it is updating everything. And I think like it's a, it's an absolutely great tool. If you have got legacy code sitting, I mean, you don't have to believe me if you've got legacy code sitting, I would say fork the repo, go give it to Codex, ask it to update so you can maintain your open source libraries much better way. But for now, GPT-5 Codex is a, looks like a great model, seems like a model that is primarily aimed at killing um, the cloud codes of the world. It doesn't seem like it's going to be available on API. Uh, I think it's a strategic move because maybe they don't want anybody else to use it. But for now, GPT-5 Codex looks like a great product. Let me know after you try this out. See you in another video. Happy prompting.